There is a wonderful mural behind us, um, which was created by almost a hundred artists. Tell us a little bit about the history of this mural. It's the collective mural of the Salon de Mai of 1967. The Salon de Mai was a Parisian institution that was born in, in May 1945, just after the liberation of Paris. It grouped together the best artists of the European scene. The Salon de Mai artists were all invited officially by the revolutionary government to show their works in Havana and then they would show them in Paris afterwards. And what happened is while they were there, they produced this extraordinary mural uh, over one night. And each had a little sector. And then for those who know, you know, the artists of that period, you can recognize Raoul Martinez and Jacques Monori and uh, César and uh, uh, Wilfred Olam, the, the circle in the middle. And as we, you know, go down the spiral, the number 26 is left blank. And number 26 was Fidel Castro because his movement was the one of July 26, so that is, that's his sacred number. But he never had the time to come and, and visit. And the year after, in 68, this mural went to Paris, but that's May 68. So the show opened and there was riot in the street on this Paris May 68, and it closed down. And so actually it was only seen three or four hours outside of Cuba on its 40-year uh, existence. One of the things we hear about Cuba under the communist system is that there are limits placed on the freedom of expression. How has this affected the content of the artwork created post-1959? During the revolution, during the first years, the artists like embraced the revolution. It was a, a beautiful movement to embrace. I mean, this was, you know, freedom, getting rid of a dictatorship. Fidel himself always said, our enemies, is imperialism and capitalism, not abstract art. He was smart enough to know that an abstract painting would not cause, you know, the fall of his regime. On the other hand, in the 70s, the, the regime sort of cracked down a little bit harder, but mostly on literature and cinema. But in the uh, 80s and 90s, uh, and also due to the collapse of the uh, Soviet uh, bloc, and the collapse of the Cuban economy as a consequence, there is a, a new school or thought, a way of thought of Cuban artists to be very critical of the current state of affairs. There have been cases of censorship. Uh, they're documented, they're even documented in the catalog. The artists are very critical of the situation and one will notice this where you have a detector of ideology, where you have the island represented with cement blocks, it's El Bloqueo, it's the embargo. What do you hope to accomplish uh, with this exhibition? Cuba is not just a land of beaches, it, it's also a very, very special country with a rich history and we think that this you know, exhibition should serve in revealing this history in a better way. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a great pleasure to meet you and to uh, hear about the exhibit in detail. Well, thank you, my pleasure.